Hello, I'm one of the orthopaedic surgeons at Durant Valley Hospital. I'm going to outline the operation, but also some of the rare but important problems encountered. You'll be admitted to the hospital on the same day of your operation, and your surgeon or a member of the team will see you. A mark will also be placed on your knee. Prior to starting the operation, whilst under anaesthetic, a tourniquet is placed around the upper part of your thigh to make sure the operation involves minimal blood loss. Your skin is prepared with an antiseptic liquid and antibiotics are given to help prevent infection. Your total knee replacement involves making an incision on the front of your knee, around 15 centimetres long, to expose the bones of the knee joint. The ends of the femur and tibia bones, which have been worn out by arthritis, are removed and replaced by metallic components, which are held strongly in place with medical bone cement. The metallic components are alloys, or combinations of different metals to give them great strength. Between the metallic components, a one centimetre thick, hard-wearing plastic is inserted to take the place of the shock-absorbing cartilage that is removed as part of your operation. These components are initially checked for fit before they are cemented into place. The different layers of your knee are then stitched together and the skin is closed with either metallic clips or dissolvable stitches depending on your surgeon's preference. Your skin is dressed and pressure dressings are applied around your knee. In some knee replacement operations, a drain is placed inside the knee to collect any remaining blood after the tourniquet is let down. The drain is usually removed the following day after your operation. The following day after your operation, you will continue to receive antibiotics and a routine blood test is taken to check your blood count and kidney function. Your dressings may also be changed in the first few days after your operation. You will also receive blood thinning injections to help prevent blood clots from forming in your leg. These will need to be continued at home after you are discharged. In addition to this, you will also wear compression stockings. Finally, you will also have an x-ray of your knee as a final check, so that your surgeon can check the position of the components inside your knee. We will arrange an outpatient appointment for you in the orthopaedic clinic around six weeks after your operation to check on your progress. As a final word, it is important to mention the complications that can arise from this operation. Common complications include bleeding, infection, nerve or blood vessel damage, blood clots in the deep veins and stiffness of the joint. We will of course take all precautions to minimise the chances of these complications occurring. Once the decision is made by your surgeon for you to have your surgery, you will be given an appointment to attend the preoperative assessment clinic. The functions of the preoperative assessment clinic is to make sure that you are fit for your surgery and anesthesia. The assessment will involve you having blood tests, urine tests, tracing of your heart, ECG, and MRSA screening. If any irregularities are found with your results, you will be contacted and informed of any necessary action and further treatments that needs to be taken. We may refer you back to your GP for further management. If you have any significant medical history, such as any heart attacks in the past or any reaction to the anesthesia, your medical notes will be reviewed by the consultant anesthetist who may wish to see you in some cases prior to your surgery. We will also refer you to the occupational therapist and the physiotherapist and book you in to attend the joint school. This is a mandatory program. During your assessment, a complete history will be taken and we will give you all the advice regarding medication, anesthesia and your surgery. We will be providing you with pre-operative drinks and a questionnaire that you will be asked to fill in. The surgical admission lounge is located on the third floor, east wing opposite the clinical decisions unit. The purpose of the lounge is to prepare all elective orthopaedic patients safely for surgery and anaesthetic. The nursing team will welcome you and will be responsible for your care. They will escort you to theatre and once in theatre your care will be taken over by the theatre team. 
Our patients are expected to report to surgical mission lounge on time, as a number of theatre discs commence at 8.30. Theatre discs can be variable. As a result, you may have quite a wait depending on where you are scheduled. Please bring a book or magazine with you to keep you occupied. There is a television that you can watch should you wish to do so. You can bring a friend or relative with you, but this is restricted to one adult per patient. We ask that patients only bring in essential pieces of property. Any other property, such as night clothes and wash products, etc., can be brought into the hospital later once the bed has been identified for you. The only property that should be brought into the lounge are dressing gowns, slippers, medication in original boxes, glasses and hearing aids, dental pots if needed. Each patient will be seen by the relevant orthopaedic and anaesthetic team. They will be able to answer any questions you may have regarding your surgery, anaesthetic and discharge. If you feel you need social services, please inform staff as soon as possible as a referral can be made in order to prevent any delay in your discharge. The nursing team will check your blood pressure, pulse and temperature and you will be measured for surgical stockings. After your operation, you will be given stockings for both legs. These are to be worn for six weeks. These stockings are required to prevent deep brain thrombosis. When it is time for you to go to theatre, you will be asked to put on your theatre gown. A nurse will accompany you to theatre where the theatre staff will check your details again. A phone number will be given to your friend or relative so that they can call the surgical admission lounge three to four hours after your surgery when they can be told what ward you have been allocated to. We know this is a very anxious time for you and your relatives. However, we hope you have a comfortable and relaxed stay on surgical admission lounge. Please be free to ask any questions you or your relatives may have. Fitness for surgery and pre-anaesthetic assessment are performed in a pre-assessment clinic. This is done by a pre-assessment nurse. If you have any medical conditions that require further investigations, your notes will be reviewed by a consultant anaesthetist and you may be called in for further assessment. This appointment is important as it will help improve the outcomes of your operation. It also gives you an opportunity to ask any questions that you may have about the anaesthetic. Sometimes the consultant anaesthetist will need to refer you to other speciality doctors, such as cardiologists. This is to improve your health prior to surgery. There are numerous anaesthetic choices for hip and knee replacements. First can be a spinal anaesthetic, which is a needle injected into the lower back. You will go numb from the waist downwards and feel no pain, but you will remain conscious. Most patients prefer sedation in addition to this spinal by having drugs which make you feel sleepy and relaxed. This injection will not give you back pain and the risks such as nerve injury are very low. All of these will be explained by the anaesthetist on the day. Many patients ask, will I be awake during the operation? Sedation will be given, but this does differ from a general anaesthetic. During sedation, you breathe for yourself and the anaesthetist can wake you up if your breathing becomes an issue. The spinal technique is preferred as it gives superior pain relief. You should have less sickness and drowsiness after the operation. There is also some evidence that spinal technique provides less bleeding in the intraoperative period. A second technique is an epidural anaesthetic. This is very similar to a spinal anaesthetic with a needle injection in your lower back. The only difference is a small plastic tube, an epidural catheter, will be passed through this needle and will lie in an area next to the nerves in your back. A measured dose of local anaesthetic will be administered through that catheter. This is really only used when long operations are taking place, usually when an operation is longer than three hours. The third and final technique is a general anaesthetic. A general anaesthetic produces a state of controlled unconsciousness during which you feel nothing. You will need a breathing tube in your throat whilst you are anaesthetised. You will not be able to breathe for yourself Instead, this will be done by a breathing machine or ventilator. Most knee and hip operations performed at Darrant Valley Hospital are performed under spinal anaesthesia with sedation. Your anaesthetist on the day will help you decide what is the safest and best option for you. After your surgery, you will be looked after in the recovery area in theatre. Here your vital signs will be closely monitored. You will be transferred to the ward once your recovery nurse deems it safe for you to go. The time you spent in recovery is dependent on your situation and past medical history. Once you're safe to go to the ward and there is a bed available, the majority of patients will go to Cherry Ward. Cherry is the orthopaedic ward for patients after elective or planned surgery. Your relatives can ring Cherry Ward to get an update regarding if you have arrived on the ward 
as well as during the rest of your stay. Please maybe ask that it is one of your family members who calls the hospital and not everyone because otherwise Cherry Ward gets inundated with calls. On Cherry Ward, the nurses and nursing assistants will keep monitoring your blood pressure and the amount of time this is being done will gradually be reduced. You will have been prescribed regular pain relief. If this is not sufficient, please ask your nurse for extra pain relief. Directly after your surgery, you will be able to start taking fluids and diet again. On the day of your surgery, you might be assisted to mobilize. This will mean standing next to your bed and possibly walking a few steps. For the rest of the time, till the next morning, you will remain in your bed. Due to you being less mobile, you will get anti-clotting medication. This consists of an injection in your belly. These injections will have to continue for several weeks. During your stay, you or a relative will be taught how to do this yourself. From the day of your surgery to your discharge, you will be assisted to mobilize by physiotherapists and nurses. The aim is for you to return to being independent again. The support you get on a daily basis will be gradually decreased as you get better. The nurses and nursing assistants will ensure you're getting your medication and food on time and get help where needed. They will also help you with your hygiene needs as required, reducing the support given as you become more independent. We would ask for your family to bring in your own clothes for you to wear. Discharge is usually between the second and fifth day after your surgery. This is dependent on the decisions being made with you, the consultant, the physiotherapist, the nurses and the occupational therapy. On discharge, you will receive a letter detailing the procedure you have had, the care given, future arrangements and medication you have been prescribed. This discharge letter will be sent to your GP automatically. The doctor will prescribe your medication to take home, which will include painkillers. Your discharge involves input by a variety of staff, including a doctor, nurses, physiotherapist, occupational therapist and several pharmacy staff. Due to the high volume of discharges, we'll have to ask you to be patient because it might take several hours before everything is prepared for you, as there are also other patients on the ward which will need to be looked after. On the day of your discharge, the nurses will need to prepare the area for the next patient and therefore you might be asked to sit in the waiting area in Cherry. Good pain management is vital after your joint surgery. This will enable you to perform your exercises given to you by your physiotherapist. You may not be pain free after your surgery, but we do aim for it to be at a manageable level for you to participate in physiotherapy. We will ensure that you have regular pain medications prescribed after your surgery. Strong painkillers are prescribed by the anaesthetist and will be given to you by the nurses on the wards round the clock. If you feel that your pain is not well controlled with the medications we are giving you, you must let the nurses know and we will ensure that we can give you some more medications or prescribe you some stronger ones. If any of these medications make you feel sick or any other side effects at all, again you must let your nurse know so that we can provide you with any anti-sickness. Your painkillers will be given to you on a regular basis by your nurses. You must not let your pain rise to a level that you are unable to participate in your physiotherapy exercises. If you find asking for an extra painkiller 30 to 40 minutes before your exercises proves beneficial, then we encourage you to do so. We do not want increased pain to slow down your recovery, so please, if you do have increased pain, you must let us know. If your pain is not well controlled with a strong pain medication, there is an option of starting a PCA, which stands for Patient Controlled Analgesia. This is via a pump, and you deliver it via a button. The PCA can make you suffer with some nausea, and can be more complicated when mobilising. You will have to have a special cannula inserted to deliver this medication via a special pump. Physiotherapy is an important part of your recovery. You are advised to do your exercises before the operation and to continue with the same exercises after the operation as part of your enhanced recovery programme. The aim for doing exercises before the operation is to condition your muscles, your heart and lungs. This will make recovery after the operation much better. We will also give you crutches before your operation to practice good walking pattern and start gradually increasing your walking distance. Use your painkillers wisely by doing the set of exercises provided one hour after taking your prescribed painkillers. The advice is to undertake the set of exercises at least three times a day and walk on the hour every hour, gradually increasing your walking distance as tolerated. Make use of your patient diary to record your exercises. Take ownership of your exercise program. The power to a comfortable and timely enhanced recovery is in your hands. The physiotherapy team are here to give advice and guidance throughout your time under hospital care until discharged by your consultant. 
To get the best mileage on your new joint, you are advised to continue with the exercises forever. You should consider taking up active hobbies such as walking or swimming. This will be discussed with your consultant. We will be going through your exercises with you in the joint school. The exercises will also be in your information pack to help you remember. Hello, I am part of the occupational therapy team and our role in your hospital experience is to prepare you and your home before you come into hospital with the aim to help you regain independence in activities of daily living following your surgery. During the joint school session, you will be advised on different techniques and the equipment that you will need to help you carry out these activities. You will also be provided with the opportunity to discuss this on a one-to-one -one basis. On admission to Cherry Ward, you will be seen by a member of the pharmacy team. You will be asked what medication you were taking prior to admission. It's very important to mention any medicines that you were asked to stop leading up to your operation. It's very important that you mention any medicines that you may be allergic to or sensitive to. Please bring all your regular medication into hospital with you in their original labelled containers or dosset box, along with an up-to-date GP repeat slip. Remember to include inhalers, eye, ear, nose drops, creams or ointments, herbal or homeopathic remedies, medication purchased from your pharmacy, patches or injections. This will enable us to ensure continuation of regular medication during admission and answer any concerns that you may have. It will also avoid wastage due to redispensing of regular medication and avoid missed doses. Your medicines will be stored in an individual locked cabinet next to your bed and returned to you on discharge. At least seven days prior to your operation, you will be asked to stop any medications containing aspirin, ibuprofen, clopidogrel, diclofenac, naproxen or glucosamine. If you are taking warfarin, rivaroxaban or dabigatrin, you must consult your GP as these medications may need to be switched to injections prior to admission.